bet, friend. All right, there was a black ace on the bottom of that deck. I'll bet it's in your hand right now. I'm sorry you said that. I thought maybe you'd better take time to notice the kid ain't wearing a gun. You cutting yourself a piece of his trouble, Pop? I was watching the boys telling the truth. Your cards come off the bottom. Now, maybe you'd like to beg your pardon all the way around, hmm? Just can't keep your mind off that gun, can you? Win lots of arguments that way? Some. Only have to lose one. I don't know who you are, mister, or where you came from, but you happened by here real lucky for me. I didn't happen by. I've been dragging you for two or three days, boy, just to see how long you can keep out of trouble. <laughs> Not very long. Just who are you, mister? Funny you should ask that question. I'm your pa, son. There's trouble with boys today. They just got no respect. time you ever raise a hand in anger against your father. You get away from me. I don't want you. There were times when I did want you, lots of times. I was a kid then. I haven't been that for a long while. Not so long. I stopped being a kid before I was eight years old. You'd have had a knocking around them saloons and dance halls with your mom. What'd you want us to do, starve? Oh, I ain't blaming her. She done all she could for you. I know that. She's a good woman, best I ever had. And did you treat them all as good as you did her? You ain't as growed up as you think. Of course, you was. You'd know that people don't have to be bad to be different. Let me ask you something. Did she ever learn you to hate me? No, I learned that all by myself. Yeah, I guess it didn't come from her. Of course, your mom and me, we understood each other. A man and a woman can both be right and wrong together. Well, she had her life and I had mine. And you still got yours. As soon as I found out she was dead, I... I looked for you. I've been picking up your tracks all the way from Dakota. All right, you found me. Now you can lose me again. I hope you don't mean that, son. I never turned my back on her and you either. Well, she the one it that way. Oh, we argued, sure. My fault, sure. But she was the one broke it off with. She packed you up. Pulled out and asked me not to follow. Never. You're lying. Yeah. Seems as that's how I remember. Of course, my memory could be failing. You like to remember much better, cause you was pretty quick for a boy going on three. It's a funny thing. She, she never mentioned you much. I just figured you were dead, you know. Then I asked her and she said you weren't. But the more I thought about that, her having to struggle the way she did, the more I wished you were. Yeah, ain't it a shame we don't know what's on the other fella's mind. Yeah. Maybe there was times when she wished I would come back, just like there were times I wish I could. And maybe there was times we was both thinking the same thing together. But which one of us uh, believed it? You really thought about coming back? Never thought she'd take me. She never took nobody else. Me neither. Where do we go from here, Pa? Everywhere, son. Everywhere there is just you and me. We're going to be rich and famous. 
You'll see, son. You'll see. <laughs> Feast your eyes, Webb. Third at two thousand dollars on the hoop. You count ahead pretty fast, Pa. Oh, I don't have to count them. I know that herd. Yeah, they're out of Cimarron City. Four big spreads joined up, and they're moving their beef to the railhead. Sure got the work cut out for them next week or two. And that tall fella heading up the drive, that's Matt Rockford. He's the biggest cattle owner in this part of OK territory. President of the Cattlemen's Association, mayor of the town. And you know him. That's why I like to see him heading the other way. Him and me don't hit it off too good. Hey, you must have spent some time in Cimarron City, Pa. Never spent a day there in my life. But I spent some time finding out about it. I, I always like to know what a town's got to offer before I move in. Is that where we're heading now, Cimarron City? Why, well, bless you, son, that's where we've been heading. We'll be there by nightfall. Come on. Maybe we ought to try to get separate rooms and just to forget to mention how we're related. See what I mean? No, Pa. No, I don't. Look, I've gone most of my life forgetting to mention you. I even took Ma's name instead of yours. I figured things were going to be different now. Yeah, I know. It's a funny way to start off, huh? But, uh, well, I had plans before I ever knew we were going to get together like this. It's more than anything I ever hoped for. Now, you trust me, our business in this town will go a lot smoother. Nobody knows you're my kid. That is not yet, anyway. What business, Pa? <laughs> Why, well, getting rich and famous, like I told you. Now, don't you worry, son. You'll know all about it when your Pa thinks you're ready to know. Well, we're partners, ain't we? Yeah. Good evening, gentlemen. Well, well, ma'am. Me and my friend... Uh, oh. Me and my friend was hoping we could get a couple of rooms so we could spread out for a spell. You can just about have your pick. Half the male population of town left this morning with the cattle drive. Well, what do you know about that? We just got here in time to take up the shortage, hmm? Things haven't gotten that desperate. No, for you, ma'am, I'm sure they never would be. Your own husband... He didn't go running around chasing after them old cows, I bet. If I had one, he wouldn't have. What? Why, you mean to tell me you run this whole big place all by yourself? Pretty little lady like you with no man around to help? I didn't say all the men left. I could probably raise quite a few if I needed them. <laughs> Maybe we can just take a look at those rooms, ma'am. Maybe I could just have a look at your money. Oh, we got lots of money. Got money for room, board, and anything else. Rooms two dollars, three fifty with meals by day or night makes no difference, and there isn't anything else. Well, now there's one week in advance, ma'am. Now my name's Rafe Crowder. This is my sidekick, Webb. Uh, Webb Martin, that is. I hope I didn't give you any wrong ideas before. Hmm? You couldn't give me a wrong idea. <laughs> Want to get your things, gentlemen? I'll show you the rooms. Oh well, yeah. Thank you. Uh, what'd you have to get her all riled up for? Why, well, don't let her fool you, son. She's a real live woman. She don't mind a man noticing that. Take it from me, none of them do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you doing in bed? What are you doing out of it? I thought that's what we got them for, to rest up. Well, first night in town? Well, we gotta get out and kick up our heels. We got work to do and responsibilities. Cheering up all them female little critters who are so sad because their gentleman friend went off and left them. Well, you go ahead, Pa. You're a lot younger than I. <laughs> oh, uh... Maybe you don't think I ought to be acting like this, County of Ma, huh? Pa, who do you think I am? Some kid you gotta be careful about what you say or do? Ma's gone. You and me are on our own. Man's gotta be what he is. He ain't no good to anybody else if he isn't. Now, I'd rather have you what you are than trying to be something you ain't. 
Well, have you got more savvy than I ever had? Your ma done a good job better than I could. Well, won't you change mine? Not tonight. I got a good bed, clean sheets. I'll just plant myself right here and take root. Ah, oh, this ain't nothing. Wait till you see San Francisco. Hotel with a glass chandelier big in this whole room. Feather bed with sheets. Sheets are not just clean. They're silk. Yes, yeah, silk. And that's for you, Webb. Lace down the front of your shirt. Silk and underdrawers. And the women. Man, you think they was made of silk, too. That's when we're rich and famous, huh, Pa? Yes, yeah, soon enough, but one thing at a time. Yeah, there's no hurry. I'll sleep on it. <laughs> now, if you wake up lonesome, uh, you just wander down the street and if I ain't the place that has the brightest lights, I already will have been there and they'll tell you where to find me. <laughs> See ya, eh? <laughs> everything you wanted upstairs? Well, now, man, how could I? When you was downstairs all the time. <laughs> Do you always talk that way? Oh, I got ways of talking. I ain't even tried yet. I might, if you care to listen. Now, if I was to tell you I'm out looking for a good time, how far do you think I'd have to look? Well, how would I know unless I went along to help you look? Lady, I'll stop looking. <laughs> you take me anywhere. <laughs> Yes, sir, we're gonna do things to that. Now that I see how it works, I like it even less. Well, relax, Lane. It was her own idea. I don't care whose idea it was. She's not running the sheriff's office. I get paid for taking chances. She doesn't. Well, what can go wrong? She'll lead him right down the main street where everybody knows her. She'll sit him down at Jed Fame Saloon and keep him there for a couple hours. That's all the time we'll need. Let's go on upstairs and get the other one. Hey, go ahead. I'll meet you in a few minutes. Time to get up and around. What for? Want to sleep your life away? Come on, move. You don't want to die in bed. Where are you taking me? You'll know when we get there. Go right in here. Everybody's waiting for you. Cattlemen's Association? What do they want from me? Ask them. Good evening, Mr. Martin. Oh, you know my name. Well, that's better than I can say for any of you. My name is Kingsley. I'm secretary treasurer of the Cattlemen's Association. This is Mr. Wiley, president of the local bank. Mr. Van Cleve, manager of the Wells Fargo office. And uh, Mr. Marsh, our legal counsel. And A real big meeting. It's too bad the mayor didn't make it. All right, now, what is this? Some kind of a trial? If it is, what am I supposed to have done? You rode into town tonight with a man called Rafe Crowder. Well, if that's a crime, why don't you arrest him, too? He's just as guilty of being here as I am. This is a mistake, Kingsley. No good talking to him. He's no better than the other one. Just what's wrong with the other one? We happen to think that Rafe Crowder is a very dangerous man, a thief, and a killer many times over. You're a liar. Liar? Yes, if you really believed that, you'd have locked him up, strung him up, or run him out of town on me right along with him. We've considered all three, but we're giving you a chance to talk because there's one man in this town that has faith in you. I don't know anybody in this town. Sure you do, Webb. It's been a few years and a good many miles. You've filled out some. You too, Lane. That badge on your chest makes you look taller. I was sorry to hear about your ma. Yeah, are you in on this? You working with them too? Guess it was my idea. Bringing me here with a gun on my back. Thanks, friend. Not that part of it. Talking to you. Asking you to help. No good, Lane. I'm for putting both of them behind bars right now. On what charge? At your department. Your job is to protect this town, not to make deals with criminals. Now get this, Mr. Van Cleef. I'm not judging any man by the company he keeps. I know Webb. I knew his ma. They had a rough time. He got in a few scrapes, sure. But he's never done anything outside the law that I know of. That you know of? <laughs> I wash my hands of it. It's your responsibility. 
But if anything happens because of him, you'll answer for it. I'm willing to. Lane, I don't know why you're standing up for me or why you even have to. But as long as he keeps his mouth shut, I'll listen to you. How long have you known Rafe Crowder, Webb? Known him? I can't honestly say I ever knew him until three days ago. Then you have no special loyalty to him, no real attachment. I didn't say that. Hey, would you mind explaining that? Three nights ago, I was playing poker with a man who dealt from the bottom of the deck. He didn't like me saying so. I was sorry I said it because I wasn't wearing a gun. He figured to put a bullet through me anyway. He would have, but Rafe stepped in between. Go on. I'm alive and he's dead, but Rafe didn't draw first. You feel that Crowder saved your life, huh? Well, let's put it this way. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. That makes it hard, Webb. Hard on who? I was hoping you knew him well enough to help us. Not well enough to help him. What's he ever done to you? Nothing yet, but there's a pattern. Rafe Crowder turns up in a town. A few days pass, maybe a week. Then something explodes. A bank's looted. A Wells Fargo office is cleaned out. A city treasury's robbed. Nine robberies, seven killings. And every time, Rafe Crowder's been there first. Well, one man couldn't have done all that. Not one man. There are always others. Strangers begin drifting into town, one by one. There's no way of knowing who they are, because they're never the same men. Nobody's ever seen them talk to Rafe Crowder, or even to each other. But all at once, they're at the same place at the same time. The job's done fast, and they scatter out in different directions. You said Rafe's never been seen with them. Times he's gone before it even happens. Times he stays on after it's done. But he's always been there, Webb. You can't prove he had anything to do with the other men. No, that's why we're talking to you. To put a rope around his neck? To find out what he's doing in Cimarron City and who the other men are before we find out the hard way. We want to know the target. We want to be ready. So you've got them all tried and convicted before anything's happened. Don't you understand? It's not enough to run him out of town and put him in a cell. If he's here, chances are the plan's already in operation. This time we've got to stop him. You've got to help us. We'll see that you're well paid. Well paid? Get out of my way. Stop him, Lane. He'll go straight to Crowther with everything he knows. Your plan didn't work, Lane. Admit it. You can't let him work out of here after what he's heard. He's heard only what we've told him. And he didn't ask to hear that. So what do we do? Throw him in jail? Hang him? Shoot him? Just because he didn't like our proposition? Just remember what I said. If anything goes wrong on his account, I'll see that your badge comes off. And that you stand trial right beside him or in his place. I'll forget everything I heard here tonight, Lane. That's the best I can do. Thanks for that, anyway. You're back in a loser, Lane. Maybe. <laughs> My dad has set him up again. I'm buying a drink for the whole house. I don't need your pies, gents. The big man's still spending. This is my night to howl. <laughs> you, you ain't drunk nothing. Seems to me you're doing all right without any help. Without it? Oh, that's what I like about you. <laughs> nothing I like better than a filly who kicks right back at you. Let's get out of here. Aren't you having a good time? <laughs> no. Well, then why do you keep laughing? <laughs> I don't mean nothing. I, I never laugh when I have a good time. I not a real good time. Let's go someplace where I can stop laughing. Hmm? Oh, where, where, my boy? Where? <laughs> Couldn't sleep for all that, that, that owl hooting? I gotta talk to you, Ray. 
Well, sit down and talk. That's all I've been doing all night. Sit down. This lady's a great listener. She's such a... Matter of fact, she don't talk a man out of nothing. She just listens him out of something. Please, outside, it's important. Come on. All right. All right. She's right there, Princess. Be back in a minute. Excuse us, ma'am. My pleasure. Kid with Crowder. You think he's in on it too? The old man don't introduce the hard hands until the time comes. You know that, Toby. And time's getting too short for him to be carrying on that way. He'll never sleep it off by tomorrow morning. He ain't as bad off as he acts. Rafe Crowder never put himself to a disadvantage. Come far enough. Now speak your piece. You sober up pretty fast, Pa. I'm only drunk when I want to be. We got to get out of town right away. Now, tonight. Oh, who said so? Well, I can't tell you that, but we're in big trouble if we don't. You can't tell me? I'm your Pa, boy. There ain't nothing you can't tell me. Pa, you got to trust me. It's not safe for you to stay. We've been talking, and what'd they say about me? That don't matter. The main thing is you and me, Pa. We got to stick together now. That's the only thing that counts. Yeah, I guess it is. You're some boy, Webb. You're likely to make a man yet. Changing your plans, boys? Hi, Rafe. Remember me? I never saw you in my life. Got to talk to you, Rafe. I told you I don't know you, and I'll get out of here. Don't you see I'm busy? Well, that's all right, sure. Friend can hear what I got to say. He knows me, too. you crawl out of it. It's been a dry spell since you and me rode together, right? I told you to forget you ever knowed me. When I'm done with a man, I'm done with him. Now, what's this between you and him? Well, didn't he tell you what happened? I was there, Ray. Where? It looks like he didn't tell you. Maybe you don't know whose side you're on. It's a funny thing. I was thinking the same thing about you. You want to tell me now before he does? Well, it doesn't make any difference now. Him and another man, they got me out of bed, took me across the street with a couple of guns on my back. <laughs> Wait a minute, Rafe, let him finish. I was only playing along with the others. What others? Citizens Committee, all the big men in town. A banker, a lawyer, the manager of Wells Fargo, even the treasurer of the Cattlemen's Association. They were all there asking questions. About me? What'd you tell them? Nothing. What do I know about you? <laughs> Maybe more than you did, hmm? So it was all true, what they said. Nothing's all true. How did a boy handle himself, Roy? Like he says, he kept his mouth shut. But his lawman friend made him promise not to tell before they'd let him go. Friend? Lawman? Lane Temple, he knew me and Ma in Dakota. Must have made it pretty hard on you. Putting you in the middle like that, I can see what you was up against. The point is, you can't be using him now for whatever you got in mind. Just what do you think I got in mind? Oh. Come on, Rafe, I know you've got something good lined up. I can smell it. Let me in on it. He can't help you now. They're watching you and him both. I can handle any part of the job you got lined up for him. Didn't I do all right the other time? You know you can trust me. I never trusted any man more than once. That's why I'm alive, Roy. I never worked with men twice. Nobody's going to remember that far back. I've been living right here for two years, staying out of trouble. Ain't nobody going to tie me in with you. I guess you're right. Sure. I got an itch to be moving. I have some money to spend again. Kind of looks like you'd have to go along with me, don't it, Rafe? You and me meeting up like this? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I got no other choice. <laughs> Right 
boy. I didn't mean to be so rough on you. Hurt yourself? No, I, I'm all right. I'm just shook up. That's all. Well, why'd you try to stop me? Slow me up like that could have gotten me killed. I guess I didn't think of that. Sure, boy, I know, and I didn't have time to tell you. Only next time, remember, don't ever get in my way when I choose a fight. Well, I didn't notice him put up much of a fight. Oh, you'd have noticed plenty if you ever got started. That Roy was a real tough boy. You don't mess around with them kind. You uh, do see that I had to do it, hmm? I guess so. Sure you do. Well, that Roy could have... He could have sunk us both for sure. You know, trying to horn in and... And then putting a squeeze on like that, he, he didn't use any real good sense. I guess not. Like you said, it's only you and me that matters. That still goes, don't it? Nothing's changed, has it? Yeah, you're some boy, Webb. You remember what I... How we'd get rich and famous and how I'd tell you all about it and how we'd do it when you was ready? Well, you're ready. How do we do it, Pa? You go on back to your room and I'll tell you when we get there. Where are you going? Well, it wouldn't be neat to leave poor old Roy around so someone could stumble over him. But you ain't up to it, skedaddle. I'll manage him. Well, it looks like it wasn't lying about one thing. Sure scarce on spending money. Well, how do you do? Listen to them little bells. <laughs> sure has some fancy notions, this boy. Where can we talk? Lock the door. Pull down the sheets. You changed your mind. You were right. You've got to stop him. I've got to help you. What did it, Webb? I've just been watching him kill a man. He was just talking to him, then he killed him. It was one of the men that brought me to the meeting. Roy was his name. Roy Rankin. But why? They knew each other from way back. They did a job together once. Rafe couldn't risk having him around. That's all the reason there was. All right, now you got what you want. Now you can hang him. And the other men? Oh, I don't know the others. All I know is him. Now, you'll find him waiting for me in my room. I won't be there. And where are you going? I don't know. Anywhere, just so long as it's now. You can't. Don't you see, Webb, it's not enough. Not enough? What more do you want? If we get Crowder and don't get the others, what he planned for this town can still happen. And once he sets them up, they do happen. We've got to know who the others are, where and when it's going to be. I know it's asking a lot. He told me maybe he'd tell me tonight. Then we got him. Now, Lane, these other men, they could be anybody here in town, just like Roy, you know? So if I go along with you, only you and I can know about it, huh? That's the way it'll be. Now, you stay away from me. When I'm ready, I'll get to you. I knew I didn't make a mistake about you. Sure, I feel real proud of myself. No, you feel rotten. It's not easy to set a trap for somebody you know and maybe liked. But don't waste your feelings on Crowder. He's hardly even human. I wonder what that makes me. How do you mean? He's my father. Well, prodigal son returns. Hmm? What'd you do, take the long way around? I stopped for a drink. That little landlady still sitting there? No, I guess she got tired of waiting. Well, she didn't wait long as she was here before I was. Says she's retired and don't wish to be disturbed. Well, if you knew, how come you asked me? Oh, I often ask things, just see what kind of answer I get. I've been laying here, I think about that little landlady. She sure runs hot and cold, don't she, and so sudden. Guess that goes with being a woman. Oh, I think I got her figured out all right. She just played up to me long enough so as them citizens or whatever they were had time to get to you. Maybe. 
can't hardly trust nobody anymore, can you? Oh, which reminds me. You better take to wearing that thing more. I hardly ever wear it to bed. That's where I was when they broke in on me. Of course, if you was wearing it the other night, that gambler fellow might have killed you. No. No. He was fast. Not that fast. Then maybe he wasn't wearing it because you... you were scared you might have to kill someone? Well, that's what they make him for. Did you ever use it for that? No. Well, then how do you know you're fast? I shot up some bottles once. Bottles ain't got faces. Faces make a difference. If ever you use that thing against a man, don't look in his face. Might slow you down. I'll try to remember. Something you wanted to say to me? Oh, yeah, yeah, but uh, that'll keep until the morning. I, I wouldn't want to spoil a surprise. been doing sitting up all night shame on you boy you need your strength we got a lot of work to do I just couldn't sleep I'll be all right as soon as I get some coffee well breakfast ought to be ready when we get to where we're going where's that I got some friends I'd like you to meet now ah, here you better take these because we won't be coming back here The man that asked me most of the questions last night, Pa. Don't tell me he's a friend of yours. Boy, probably the best friend you and me ever had. Come on. Well, hi, Stump. Great. Everything wolf, like I said? No hitches yet. Well, there won't be. Oh, uh, Stump, I'd like you to meet my son, Webb. Son? I never thought you used anybody you knew. Well, uh, I didn't know Webb until this week. He's all right, though. Uh, tell me, did uh, Dobie get out here all right with that kid? Half hour ago. <laughs> that Kings, he'll probably have more questions this morning than he had last night. Well, morning, folks. All right, Crowder. What have you done with her? Where have you taken her? Now, there, there, Mr. Kingsley. Your little girl is just as safe with my friend Dobie as she would be in her mother's arms. Animal! <laughs> Animal! <laughs> no need taking on, ma'am. Dobie, uh, the, Mr. Doberman, that is. He's got two kids of his own. Nothing's going to happen to your daughter. As long as your husband does like I tell him. All right. I'll do anything you say. What's your price? Well, uh, say, $40,000. Now, I know you ain't got that kind of money, but the Cattlemen's Association does. And you're the treasurer. Oh, I can't touch that money. Of course you can. All you gotta do is open that big old safe in the office, and we'll just sit here and keep company with your wife till you get back. I'm not gonna leave her with you. Martin, you have to. We've gotta think about Lucy. You got a lot of sense for a woman. Now, I'll make it real clear, Miss Kingsley. Your kid's in no danger. Not until 3 o'clock this afternoon. 3 o'clock? Yeah. That's when me and my friend's supposed to meet up with Doobie. Uh, saddle a horse for Mr. Kingsley, Stump. Get ours out of sight. Now, I figure you ought to be back here with that money by noon. We know you're going to be extra careful getting it and real punctual getting it back, kind of your wife being here with us. Well, that's the easy part. Reason Dobie's holding the kid is just so you won't get no notion of setting the law on us after we light out of here with that money. Yeah, old Dobie's going to be waiting for us. I know I'd be so glad to turn that little girl of yours loose. Being a family man and all that, he, 
He just hates the idea of killing her. Killing her? I'm afraid he's got a ma'am if we don't meet him at three o'clock. You better get the money, Mr. Kingsley. All right. But if anything happens to my wife or my daughter, I... Why don't you stop worrying? They're under my protection, Mr. Kingsley. <laughs> well, you see how easy it is to become rich and famous, son. And that all comes from planning ahead. Like waiting for all the ranch hands to move out on that trail drive. Oh, ma'am, why don't you go back in the kitchen? Webby ain't even had his breakfast. Size do you good to get busy. Sort of keep your mind off things. What makes you think I won't poison you? Well, ma'am, if you was to do that, we couldn't very well meet up with Mr. Dobern on time. Now, could we? Where are we going to meet, Dobie, Pa? I'm the only one who knows that. Well, what if something happens to you? How are we going to find him? <laughs> well, you wouldn't. So, I guess nothing better happen to me, huh? Mr. Kingsley. What? Going somewhere? Uh, well, just, uh, just out to my home. Uh, going to work on the books a little. Much too hot to work inside today. What? Anything wrong? I'm not sure. Beth tells me that Webb Martin and Rafe Crowder pulled out early this morning. Took their things with them. After paying for a full week. Oh, uh, what'd you expect? Martin obviously told Crowder that we questioned him and we scared him off. I can't believe that. You still trust that boy? I pity you, lady. What's wrong, Kingsley? Wrong? You're wrong, that's all. Look, I've got nothing more to say to you. There have been too many words already. Good day, Beth. I think I'd win any elections right about now. You think it's about time you admitted you were wrong, Lane? Before I do, there's one other possibility. See you later, Beth. Well, he's sure taking his own precious time. Maybe I did make one mistake. Mistake? Why did your husband gone and got tired of you? Got himself some sweet young thing to take your place. Man want to get rid of his wife, sure be the smart way to do it. By not coming back before noon. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one, Ray. Shut up, stump. Now, Webb, well, I'm just trying to figure every angle. You know, you got to think of the human side. Human? What did you know about anything human? Well, ma'am, you'd be surprised how human I can get sometimes. Just sitting here looking at you, I've been feeling real human. How long has it been since that old man of yours told you what a good-looking woman you are? Get away from me. Well, if you don't care enough for you to come back, why, well, I'd be willing to take you off his hands. Sorry to spoil your fun, Rafe. He's here. No offense, ma'am, but no woman's worth $40,000. Mrs. Kingsley, no, talk to me! I've got to stop. No! Martin! I don't guess you'd short count me, Mr. Kingsley. Your daughter ain't home yet. All right, Stump, get the horses ready. Well, come on, boy, we're all done here. You, get over here and keep it quiet. Had to get smart after all, didn't you? Go right in the back, Webb. Hey! Talk fast, Webb. I didn't have time to warn you. They've got the Kingsley girl. I've got to stay with him till I find out where. <laughs> Dead? No. Stump is. Don't do it, Pa. Why not? Because he was a friend of mine. 
Not anymore. Wait, Crowder. Whatever you do to me, don't take it out on Kingsley. He didn't know I followed him here. Well... Well, that's mighty nice of you to think of him like that now. Well, why should I kill him, Webby? Seems like a nice sort, and that, that stump wasn't nothing special, no how. Go on, son. That's just to keep him quiet. Hmm? Nobody following yet. We already got a couple hours head start anyway. Well, more than a couple hours. Must be getting on at 3 o'clock. Must be. Yep, 25 till. Well, hadn't we better keep moving, at least until we run into Dobie? Or is this where you plan to meet him? Mm, no. Nope. Well, how far is it? Where Dobie is, that don't matter. We're all the way to San Francisco, boy. Without meeting Doby. No, Doby, he'd only get in the way. Besides, 40,000 splits two ways real neat. I can't figure how to split at three. But the kid, what about her if we don't meet Doby at three o'clock? <laughs> They'll give old Doby something to think about so he won't be thinking about us till we're long gone. You said he'd kill her. Yeah, I guess I did. Now you get up on your horse, because we're going to meet Doby. Well, you was right about one thing, son. You sure pull a gun mighty fast. Ain't you forgetting? Boy, don't point a thing like that at his pa. You were my pa for just three days of my life. I never had a pa before then. I stopped having one last night when you killed Roy. So that's what you and your lawman friend were talking about before I shot him, hmm? Yeah. I could have guessed it. Didn't want to. You get up on your horse. I don't want to kill you, but you being who you are ain't going to stop me if I had to. Finally, I went through a heap of trouble trying to find you after your ma died. <laughs> don't hardly seem worth it. You're just wasting time. Yeah? Just 20 minutes left. Well, at least you can't kill me till that time's up, can you? Not when I'm the only one can take you to where Dobie is. I could start killing you a little bit at a time. First one leg, and then the other. Hey, listen, them bells again. It's mighty pretty, ain't it? Here, boy, cat. You sure got self-control, boy. And mighty good aim, too. And you got some old tricks. Now, where's the kid? You won't find that out unless you make a deal. Tell you what, put that gun back in the holster and I'll tell you. Mm-mm. I got no reason to tell you if you don't. But that $40,000 on my horse, that's the reason. Gives one of us a chance to ride out with it. Not both. There was 20 minutes left when you stopped that watch. Must be a few minutes less by now. Take you 15 minutes to get to where Adobe is. Doesn't give you much time to think, does it? I'll tell you what you want to know before I go for my gun. That's a promise. Now tell me. I'm surprised at you, Webb. I really am. You actually thought I'd let Dobie hurt that kid? Sweet, innocent little child that never done no harm? What kind of a man do you take me for? I told Dobie to turn her loose at 3 o'clock no matter what happened. Are you telling me the truth? Yeah. She's on her way home now, and you'd have never made it anyway. 
just as far the other way as what we've come. That makes this much harder, Pa. Yeah. Too bad we never got to know each other. But you said it before, you never had a pa. And I never had a son. Not really. We're just a couple of strangers with no real good reason to like each other. I guess that's the end of it, boy. He told you that Crowder was his father. You, you still went along with him? Yes. I still think he did all he could. That's enough. You're all through, Lane. You're finished. That badge is yours. None of us like doing this, Lane, but you took full responsibility and later... Never mind all of that. I took a gamble and I lost. I won't Welsh run out on you. You haven't lost yet. Your bet's paid off. He brought him back. Here's your money. You better count it. What's the story? Uh, thieves fall out? That's enough. Can't you see he's been hurt? Somebody get Doc Hodges. The little girl. She's in her own bed web. Sound asleep. I know what you had to do. They'll all believe it now. I didn't say I'd kill him, Lane. My own pa, I didn't promise that. Did he give you a choice? Guess not. You've come back to stay. Stay? No, I can't. I've got to move on. Going where? Looking for what? I don't know. Whatever it is, you found it here, Webb. Most every day, the population of Cimarron City changes, one way or the other. Yesterday, we lost Roy Rankin. Today, we gained Webb Martin. We figure we got the best of the deal. <laughs> 